So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use guides and grease pencil to draw in one point perspective. And this is a follow up to my previous video, which provided an overview of drawing in perspective. So in that video, I had some examples of one, two and three point perspective. And here's another example. Again, this is a uh, screenshot from Daredevil. And I'm going to loosely draw this in grease pencil so you can see how it works, but I'm not gonna, you know, go into hyper detail with this or anything. It's just an example. But I want to show you the example of what I'll kind of be looking at. And then I want to explain one point perspective as it relates to this image. So if I turn on my one point perspective lines, so based on these lines, you can see that the vanishing point is near or around his left thigh. So if I turn on my parallel lines, you can see those going across mainly the window in the back and the wall in the back. And that gives me my horizon line because it's the same angle as the parallel lines. So if I turn that on, we can see it here because it crosses the vanishing point, which is there. And then here are my perpendicular lines. So I want to turn these off for a second. I won't be drawing this in the drawing because this is a two point perspective, but you'll notice the dumpster that's in the scene that's behind the kingpin. It's actually a two point perspective because it's turned. It's not aligned with the other elements in the alley. So if I turn on the horizon line and the dumpster lines on the left, you can see that those still vanish on the horizon line, but their vanishing point is far to the left. And then the ones on the right, I didn't show those, but those would be to a vanishing point closer on the right than the left. But I really just wanted to show how far away that vanishing point is outside of frame. So you can have one point perspective in a scene and have objects in the scene that are two point perspective. So again, I won't be drawing that in this example, but I did want to point that out. So I want to start in Grease Pencil by drawing the vanishing point and then the horizon line. And then I'll add some perpendicular parallel and one point perspective lines. So you can see how that would work in Grease Pencil and my workflow for that. But again, this won't be a full rendering of the scene. I just want to provide some examples. Here I have Blender 3.3.1. And the first thing I want to do is click on 2D animation and I'm going to middle mouse button scroll to zoom out. So to help with this example, I've already drawn an image of the Kingpin in Photoshop and I'm going to import that in as an image on a plane so it can interact with the grease pencil strokes. So to normally do this, you'd have to create a plane and then apply the image onto it as a material. But Blender does provide us a quicker option than that. So I'll go to this drop down and change from draw mode to object mode. And if I hit shift A, this is my add menu, I'll scroll down to image. And you can see we only have two options, reference and background. And neither of those will allow me to interact with the strokes in Grease Pencil. So to fix that, and instead of having to create a plane and apply the material myself, I'm gonna to go to edit, preferences, and this add on menu, I'm gonna click in the search field and type in plane. So Blender has this add-on called Import Images as Planes, which will allow me to add the image and it'll handle making the plane and the material for me. So now while still in object mode, I hit Shift A, I'll scroll down to Images and select Images as Plane. This will prompt me to browse for the image I'm looking for. So I already have one prepared. I want to double click on that. You can see that. So I'm going to click on it while in object mode, hit S to scale it and bring that up. And I'll hit G, Z to constrain the Z axis and pull it down. Now there is an issue with this. If I click on stroke, because you have to have selected stroke to go back into draw mode. And I'm going to click draw mode and I want to draw a stroke. So if I middle mouse button and drag, So you can see the kingpin image and the stroke are the same spot in the viewport. So if I click on draw mode and change it to object mode, and then I click on kingpin, I'm gonna hit G and Y to grab it and pull it forward on the Y axis. So now I know that it's in front of the stroke. Click to let go. I'll click on stroke and go back to draw mode. Hit zero on my numpad. And you can still see the stroke through the image. So I need to click on the kingpin image. I'm going to go down to the materials icon and click it. 
Then under settings, I hope that won't work. I'm still in draw mode. So let me click on object mode and then reselect the kingpin image. Go to the materials tab, settings, and in blend mode, I'm going to change that to alpha clip. Now you can see that the stroke is blocked by the image, which is what I want. So I'm going to click back on stroke and go to draw mode. So I'm going to temporarily hide the kingpin image by clicking this icon here, the eyeball icon. And I want to show you something about this stroke. So if I go to edit mode and I highlight this, and let me click the points tab, you can see the stroke is made up of a lot of different points. So I'm going to go back to draw mode. And under stroke here in the toolbar, you can see post-processing it is added. So I want to note that when you erase in Grease Pencil, you're actually erasing points. You're not erasing a raster line. So if I click on the erase tool, you see I can erase that away as I need to. But if I go back to the draw tool and I turn on guides here, and then I select grid, which allows me to draw up and down and left and right. I'm going to draw a line, then I'm going to select eraser, and I'll erase that line, and you see the whole line erases. That's because if I go to edit mode, I can show you, I select that. It's only made up of two points, one here and one here. So there's nothing for the eraser to erase. It erases the whole thing or, or nothing. So to fix that, I'm going to go back to draw mode. I'm going to go back to stroke. And it's this post-processing option that's causing that. It's simplifying the line. So it knows if you've got a straight line, you only need two points to create that. So if I turn that off, and then I draw another line, let me go to edit mode and select that. Now you can see it's made up of a lot of points. So if I go back to draw mode and select the eraser, I can erase this one the same as the other one. So for the guides to work in this instance and still give you the ability to erase the line when you use it, uh, you'll need to turn that off. So I'm going to go back to edit mode, select everything, and hit delete, and delete points, and then back to draw mode. So I'm going to turn my kingpin back on. So again, I know the vanishing point is at his left thigh. So you can see this red dot. If I go to the draw tool and then Guides is already turned on, and I choose Radial. So Radial gives me three options to use where my lines will end or cross. That's cursor, a custom point, or an object. In this case, I'm going to continue using the cursor. So if I click to the left where you see this cursor icon, and I put my mouse and click where I think the vanishing point should be, see the red dot's there now. So if I go back to my Draw tool, in a draw, you see it's crossing that red line. So that's how we can make a vanishing point. If you need two point perspective, which I may do in another video, you can't have more than one cursor in the scene, but you can have multiple objects. So you could switch back and forth between those objects in order to use two or three point perspective. So I'm going to click on my stroke and go down to the grease pencil menu here click on that, and I'm going to add another layer. So these are my layers similar to Photoshop. So I'm going to click on one. I'm going to double click it to name it Horizon. And then I'm going to go to Guides and go to Grid. And I'm going to draw my line across here for my Horizon line. So I'm going to click on Draw Mode and change it to Object Mode. You know, hit G, and I'll pull that up just a little bit, and then go back to Draw Mode. 
So I'm actually gonna go back to object mode, G, and pull it down just a little bit. And you could actually just change your vanishing point if you wanted to. So now you can see my horizon line is crossing that vanishing point. So now I'm going to, I'm gonna click this button here to rearrange my horizon below my lines, and then I'm gonna click this lock to lock it. So now I can't work on that at all. So the next thing I wanna do is I wanna scroll in and show you something else about the lines. So if I draw a line, I'm on the horizon, so I need to go back to lines. If I draw a line and then draw another line, you can see how where the lines cross, it's darker, and that's because two things. One, I have the pressure on my strength, and the strength is set to 0.6, so that means it has some transparency. So I'm gonna move that all the way up to one and turn off the pressure. I'm also gonna turn off the pressure on my radius. And then I'll click on this menu and change my color to a lighter gray, something closer to the drawing. So now when I draw all these and overlap them, you can see I don't have that issue anymore. So I'm gonna undo those. Scroll out. Okay, so with guides selected and grid selected from that, and grid will allow me to draw vertically and horizontally. So again, I'm not gonna draw the whole image, but I do wanna show you a few things. So, see I was on grid. So I need to change this to radial. And I've got the cursor selected as my option. So I want the line to be, you know, the alley to be about this far away. Okay, we'll use that. And then I want to go to grid. I want to do a perpendicular line here. And go back to my erase tool. I still feel like that's not far enough away, so let me do another line here. Erase tool. Okay, I think that looks good. So now I'm going to go back to my draw tool, draw our background line here. I actually want to do that, go a little higher. Erase tool. Then I want to draw another line here. I'm going to change this to radial. Then we'll draw the lines in the background. So let me go to the draw tool, guides, grid. I'll draw a little more detail here and then I think we can kind of end this example. In the scene, there's a box in the wall. So if I wanna do that, I can click on radial and for some reason our line has moved, cursor. So let me go back and reset that. And then I'm gonna click on draw and then let's see, let's do the box. It's actually the boxes. The bottom part's just barely above his thigh, so let's do that, and that, 
Then I'll go to grid. And then go to the erase tool. Actually, the box is a little more shallow than that. So let me erase this and go back to the draw tool. And then let's say there was, it's next to a wall edge. So let's do that. And it had a piece of wood under it. And a ledge. And I'm going to click on guides, radial. You're not seeing this perspective much there because it's so close to the uh, horizon line. Okay, I think that's enough for this example. I mean, obviously I could spend hours on this, but I just want to show you how with just those two options in the guides that you can use, uh, just between radial and grid and setting a cursor as the radial point that you have a vanishing point and then you can you know set your scenes perspective as needed um, it doesn't work quite like grids you would expect in like um, clip studio paint or harmony tomb boom harmony but i think for blender this works pretty well and again i'm looking into ways to use keyboard shortcuts or pop-up menus or even something more in depth to make this process quicker and more intuitive. But for now, uh, this is the way I've been using it. And I thought this example might provide some insight on how you could use it too. It's not well documented as far as I can tell. So hopefully this is helpful. I may do a two point perspective example in the future. So be on the lookout for that. Appreciate you watching and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.